it, it's shocking and horrifying and no one is standing up to them uh, to refute their old faith lies. And back, oh, sorry. No, no, go. Going back to what you said about winning progressives over and making sure that the anti-sex work quote-unquote feminists don't completely co-opt their, their hearts and their minds, what do you think is the best angle to take on that? Um, well, what I did in the beginning was just was just being willing to talk about my experiences as a sex worker to any press person who would show up. So in the beginning, I was a feminist porn star and just like the talking dog, I gotta see that. Uh, they would so I get I would get a lot of press by, by being willing to speak about my about my experiences. Of course, 26 years ago, it was considered a little more rare. Um, now there are a room full of feminist sex workers, most of whom will probably be willing to talk to academics. Um, if you live in a university town, I make contact with the Women's Studies Program and uh, the Student Health um, Program and to say, I'm, I'd like to be a resource for you to have a, a fuller um, discussion about uh, sex and sex work and to start getting your, getting your face out there. Oh, well, we can call Susie and she'll talk about it. Understand, of course, that you'll get a lot of shit from people and it's really hard to sit on a stage and hear someone tell blatant lies about what it is you do and not jump up and throttle them. That part's the hard part. If you can figure that out, please let me know. Um, so uh, talk, if you have a, if it's a local free paper, contact the editorial board and, and, and say, to do a story about um, you know the local strip club. Um, again, because I'm in the entertainment business, it was easier for me to be reached by the media because I was out there in public. Um, but if you're in a university, just make overtures and for every five people in a university who hate what you do, there's going to be one person who is secretly, you know, cheering you on. Find that person and make allies with them. Thank you. Aloha, um, I was wondering, um, what advices do you have for um, today's uh, people who uh, want to get into the pornography and do you feel that um, this is a safer option um, for girls who or guys and who are interested in uh, who are in the sex work industry if going through pornography would be a safer option because it's illegal for a, be a sex worker not not Did everyone hear the question? Um, up until about three years ago, I knew exactly what to tell people about making porn, which was for the most time, don't do it. Because one thing about porn, unlike being a stripper or a direct service provider, there's proof always. You can never take it back. You ever go, wasn't me, with that dick in my ass. <laughs> people will say, Nina, you're so cool, why don't you run for public office? Because two clicks from now, there's pictures of me with semen dripping off my chin. <laughs> and that doesn't make a good campaign poster. So. <laughs> Kisses. No, I used to say, no, I used to, I used to say, well, if, if I was president, part of my national health plan would be at least every adult gets one monthly visit to a direct service provider. So, 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 that's, part, that's part of the mental health services. Um, and so you'd all vote for me and that makes a hundred of you. <laughs> So pornography these days, it's still only legal to make in California. I mean, we, we have fought to the California State Supreme Court in 1988 for the right to shoot pornography in California. No one can bust the feds, we pull permits, and so the cops show up, here's a permit, thank you very much, and they have to leave. No other state in the union is illegal to shoot porn. However, a lot of people are shooting in uh, Michigan garages and down in Florida, and there's been no test cases there. Um, Pornography is safer and it's not safer. It's safer in that in California it's legal, you're not going to be arrested, not going to be harassed, but they do have a little more narrow definition of what bodies are acceptable. Not as narrow and rigid as the anti-porn feminists would have you think, but still uh, most porn is very queer, nervous, and very alt-nervous. There's like two companies, that, three companies that handle people who don't look conventional. Um, and up, up until internet piracy, uh, it was possible to be a full-time pornography employee. You could make a living as a performer, a makeup artist, a shooter, a boxer and shipper. And now with the internet piracy as bad as it is, as prevalent as it is, porn is becoming more of a part-time job again.
When I started in 84, it was a part-time job. No, it was a full-time porn performer. There wasn't enough work. Then for 24 years, there was plenty of work. And now in the last couple of years, it's fallen through the roof. My business is down 50% from a year ago. Um, and it's not because I'm older, it's because I'm a, now, because I'm a MILF or a cougar or an icon or a legend, whatever. <laughs> I'm just a freak, okay? I play, but I play straight people on TV. So it isn't, it isn't economically safer and it isn't necessarily even, um, uh, and you can't do it everywhere. Because in California, at least we have a support group, we have a clinic, we have places people can go and lodge complaints. And if you're a pornography worker anywhere else, again, going, you can't go to the cops and say, I was making this movie in this garage and this guy like beat me up. It's like, what the fuck were you doing making a movie in a garage, you silly thing. So I'd say no, actually. One thing about being a, a direct service provider is that you get to have some semblance of privacy and when you put your cards away and take off your mini skirt and take off your tight jeans and put on normal clothes, you can go out in the world and people and go work at the record store. And so you have some samples of a, of a, of a private life. I'm just gonna say that this will be the last question because of timing and the fact that our sessions are gonna be starting oh. soon, so. Hi, um, first of all, I've been a fan since I found my dad's stash. And you're great, and thank you for coming here. Um, uh, but I have a really ambitious uh, idea that I'm eventually going to put into a presentation proposal for one of these talk conferences eventually. I think the path to um, uh, decriminalization and human rights, etc., lies with economic freedom. Economics is kind of a fetish of mine. I know it's weird, but. Y'all gotta be Don't judge turned me. on by something. So I have this idea that resembles in my head kind of an internet-based sex workers credit union. And I'm really interested in figuring out which aspects of the adult industry I could approach for startup capital. And since you've worked at all of it, I was, I was thinking either the pornography industry or strippers, because they seem to be legitimate and they have a lot of cash. But I was wondering um, what you thought, if you had any advice, and I'll... I love, the, I love the idea of an online bank for and by sex workers. The pornography industry is bleeding money out its ass, and there is no place to go within it for, um, uh, for capital. Um, smaller companies are dying like one a week and leaving only the biggest companies, and they're still figuring out how to handle the... Um, uh, how to handle the fallout from the piracy and the fact that people now under 30 don't think they need to pay for porn. Um, porn's free, right? It's free. 